Mike, what's good, man? It's been a minute. I was just in your neck of the woods like a month ago, maybe a little bit longer back there in Northern Virginia. How are you, man? Uh, you know, I can't complain. Things are okay for, uh, for, for being quarantined. Ironically, I'm joking that it turns out that my normal lifestyle could more or less just be <laughs> described as quarantine. So yeah. for me, if I'm going to be honest, it does, not much has changed in terms of my day to day. I'm working out at home instead of at the gym, which is okay. And I have some bands and I have some dumbbells. So I'm able to make do with that actually getting in decent workouts mm. and I have plenty of work to do and I'm healthy. My family's healthy. And you know, I, I can't, I can't complain. Businesses are doing okay. So knock on wood, right? Yeah. So yeah, where's so, some wood. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but, so Mike as a human being, man, you know, pretty much business as usual, holding the line uh, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, we don't have to get too off, too off on, on a tangent, but um, I, I'm a little bit concerned about where this goes from here when you have guys like Bill Gates calling for forced vaccinations and microchipping and we shouldn't even be allowed to congregate or travel until we've gotten the vaccine and the microchip. And so some bold statements and, coming out of a lot of people now. Yeah, yeah, kind of almost like some mask off moments, right? And and again, I don't want to get off on a on a on a, on a random tangent, but there there this this could go this this could go in a very bad direction. Mm. Um, I mean, historically, right? Where does every government end up? Complete tyranny every single time. That's where it ends. Going through my history rolodex, yeah, <laughs> a lot of examples. It, it always that's it always ends there, right? And so. I do. I think we're in a, a final stage of of our of our current civilization. Again, there are, there are, there are historical cycles that historians have written about. Will Durant has a great. For anybody listening, find on YouTube. Um, it's a, it's a snippet from an audio book of Will Durant. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning historian, brilliant guy. He also worked with his wife. That the pair were brilliant, and it's why Rome fell. And, mm. and he is, is talking about the social and economic conditions and political conditions at the end, right before it all fell apart. And it's eerie, the, how similar. You can literally check yeah. every box, right? Wow. And so you have a few of those models, actually, that, that historians or cycles that historians have, have uh, observed throughout history and, and ones that have endured, like, again, we are there. In, I've seen three or four of them, right? And so, um, so when you when you hear about people in the government, watch Fauci will come out for forced vaccination. Mike Tripnik, watch it will happen. Mm -hmm. So when you have the government starting to move in that direction of mandated medicine, and I'm, I'm not I'm not blatantly I'm not open I'm not I'm not generally just anti vaccine. Mm -hmm. That's not the sure. point. No, no, but I'm I'm against the government coming to me and saying you put this in your body right now. And oh, this microchip too, you put that in your body. And if you don't, you can't leave your house. Uh, yeah, I'm against that. And for anybody who's read the book, Brave New World, that's why I'm against it. Because the, 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 the eugenics movement, let's remember, it started here in America. It wasn't a Nazi thing. It started, there was right, a big right, eugenics yeah. put, it, it started in, in California. You can read about some of the pretty grisly experiments that they did. And the Nazis liked it so much, they actually modeled their own program on our eugenics program. And so that, that didn't just go away, right? No, That's I've seen this movie. It's called Captain America, right? It was a documentary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is, this is a theme among the elites. It goes all the way back to the times of Plato, who despised his fellow Athenians and said these people are uh, irredeemable reprobates. And he espoused population control. And he's like, we have to keep the, the, the worst people among us from destroying everything. And then you can, you can work that all the way through Spinoza. You can work that up to, to, to Darwin, who in the origin of the species, he ranks the races. I don't know if, if, you, if you actually like read the book, right? Mm -hmm. He puts the Irish at the bottom. He hated, I'm Irish, I think that's funny. <laughs> he hated the Irish, right? But part of the argument is that the, the, the majority of genetic material that is out there is, is trash. Like his cousin, uh, Sir Francis Galton, even took it further. He was another intellectual elite, uh, um, thoroughbred, uh, globalist, pr well proto, said, well, proto, 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 nice descriptive word right? there. I like that. Yeah, exactly. Who, who straight up just said that basically 95% of the people out there should just be eliminated because for, as far as genetic material goes, 
like if we're going to continue to evolve as a species and if we're going to if we're going to uh, transcend our current circumstances we need the best dna the best stock among us to to breed and if if we if we mix that with lower quality stock too much then we're going to go in the other we're going to direction we're going to devolve right and so this has been these ideas have been around for a long time and um and you have a lot of power, people that's part of our human nature that gets off on on controlling people sure yeah. and um and anyway so so that's that's my long answer to how am i doing as a person eh, i'm fine <laughs> but but i'll say this i'm uh, i'm i'm going to i'm going to be buying a farm property probably in in west virginia or tennessee okay. probably um something that would be nice to go to for a vacation um but also something that is uh if if things go in a really bad direction a place where my family and probably some some select people can go and see what happens next and i hope none of that happens wow. i hope i'm totally wrong and um and i again i really do hope that but uh so outside of that it's just like focus on work right now is the time to absolutely make make as much of uh as me, make as much hay as i can while we still have an economy <laughs> and still and still yeah. have a functional a functional society uh, but you know i again i i, I hope i hope that, that that things are just going to go back to normal but mm -hmm. when people say that for me mm -hmm. honestly I, i'm just like yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think now is the time where we're, we're saying that word a lot. We're saying maybe a lot, a lot of maybes to what could be, uh, maybe to um, a, sense, a sense of normalcy, maybe to business as usual, life as usual, um, to, to sanity as usual. And I was telling you right before we came on here that, I mean, you, people probably know you, may know you a lot from you know, your writings. That's really, um, really how I found you, you know, years ago, bigger, leaner, stronger. Um, thinner, leaner, stronger for, for the ladies for out women. there, correct? Yeah, yeah for women. Uh, the Muscle for Life podcast, you know, a lot of, I mean, from that intro alone, I mean, you're clearly a very learned guy and that comes from reading and, you know, writing is how you kind of channel it out. And you had this blog article recently, uh, My Guide to Staying Fit, Productive, and Sane While Self-Quarantined. And you have three main things in here. One, the first step to making the most of the quarantine is creating a daily schedule to manage your time effectively. Two, once that's in place, use your time to exercise every day, eat well, you know, so on and so forth. And three, keep reading to learn exactly how to plan your days and what to do to stay fit, productive, and sane until life returns to normal. Um, I really want to kind of go deeper there on number three, man. Um, just with your, you sharing your readings and, you know, people can read a lot about you and what you have written. Um, keep reading to learn exactly how to plan your days. Where should we be reading? Where are you seeing some maybe polarizing, interesting concepts coming up in literature and media and what people are reading now? For sure. And quickly, just to let you know, if that intro is too doom and gloom, we could do a different one. <laughs> no, I'm actually no, man, serious. I like it. It's, it's totally different. Uh, I'm, I, know, I, I don't mind it. I like it. I mean, it's you. It's authentic. I don't want to like change Okay. That's me, be, it's me being completely honest. Yeah. So, uh, but, but I understand if it's like, ah, that's, that's too much, dude. People can't, they don't want to, no, look, want to I, hear that right the now. The whole point of this absolutely is, you know, you know, people watching, listening, we want them to, you know, the whole point of this for me was to really, you know, inspire hope uh, to just bring people together, to bring structure like you're talking about in these points, you know, have structure to your days, to your life, to instill a sense of normalcy. Well, also look, totally. Things don't need to change from everyday life. And in everyday life, we do have people who have different opinions, different viewpoints. Um, you read different things, you apply different things, you write different things, you live differently. Uh, and so now should be no different, I think. Cool. Yeah. I mean, hey, London Real had David Icke on twice. I don't know if oh, you saw wow. that, but Jeez. I guess See? I guess the yeah. I guess I guess the second time around, I think it got it got banned off of YouTube quickly after oh, wow. racking up. Yeah. Yeah, it's some of the stuff we don't have to go off on that. Some of the stuff I understand. Like, I think honestly, if you want to go in that direction, Alex Jones would have made a better guess because some of the shit Ike is talking about is like he's saying there is no virus, and, and there are some things are like, dude, okay. But uh, but I but I think it's cool. I think it's cool though that that London real what's his name Brian Brian Rose Brian Rose's um, 
Yeah, the, like the I believe tall, slender, British, the white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah, got yeah, the, he's like the, the best show artwork. He looks so dapper, damn man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but he's willing. He's willing to to take a bit of a risk with his platform. True. Yeah. Putting putting that type of information out. Um. So, anyways, yes. Okay. Cool. So, um. Yeah. This was this was a, a guide that I wrote. I mean, whatever. An article I wrote that just kind of sharing some of my my perspective, um, and and some of the things that I'm doing. It's not. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not citing a bunch of research here necessarily. It's more just like, here are some things that have worked for me in the past uh, and, and I think are, are definitely paying dividends now. Mm. And um, first, just, just, just a, a, bit of, a bit of perspective and what I'm kind of opening the article with is, uh, yes, this, this whole situation sucks, <laughs> but of course, like people are dying, the economies the board, are yeah. melting down and there's a lot to be worried about. Um, but if someone is watching this or listening to this, they're not probably not dying and they probably are somewhere where the economy is still functioning. They probably still have high speed internet at least. And maybe they also still have a job or have some savings or have some way to still pay their bills. And so there, there are silver linings uh, to, to be found if you look for Absolutely. them because yeah. that can't be said. Not everybody, you know, there are a lot of people who are, who are in, in, a, in a much worse place uh, right now. And, you know, I, I, I've written about in, in, a, in a book called The Little Black Book of Workout Motivation. There's a chapter called, I think, The Curse of Complaining and how I think that something that I, I actively try to avoid is complaining about anything, period. And there's like a little challenge in there of people, people, maybe this is a decent time to actually to, to do it. Right. So it's, um, a hell of a challenge. I got, I got it. <laughs> yeah. A challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. But it's good. It's uh, I got it from, uh, I forget the name of the book. I, I cite the source and I, I give credit to where I got it from. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a challenge where you wear like a rubber band on a wrist. Right. And, um, I've heard if, of this. Yeah. 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 Right. You can't complain. Like, like yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, and you, you switch, you, you uh, are trying to ideas to go 30 days without, without complaining at all. Right. And a complaint is not necessarily, and if you complain, you have to switch the, the rubber band to the other wrist. Right. So it's just something to remind you to not complain. That's really the point of it. And, and uh, the, the one, my little, my, my little addition to the challenge though was I think that uh, a criticism with like a proposed solution is not exactly a complaint. So like take, you know, we have businesses, right? So if somebody is doing bad work, you're going to say, Hey, this is bad work. This is what needs to be fixed about it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's not a complaint. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, a complaint is just kind of belly aching over something that you're not going to do anything about. You have no ideas uh, for. Right. And so that is, I think it's a muscle worth exercising the not complaining yeah. muscle. Right. Because you go down that road and that, that also then leads to, to, to just kind of a victim mentality and it discourages taking action. Right. And so yes, as bad as things are right now, there are some things we can be thankful for. And with any luck, we will come through this. Uh, Despite what I said in the beginning, I, I very well could be wrong. I hope I am wrong. And, um, so (laughs) I still have, I still have hope and I still have optimism um, it's no doubt. It's, yeah. There's just a part of me that, that is looking at things saying, Oh, there seems to be a pattern here. Hopefully we don't go in that direction. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone could really, really disagree with at least the idea of, Hey, maybe a, a better way to kind of handle a present day situation is to look into the past and to see where maybe we yes. mirrored with other yes. civilizations and let's just look for similarities. From- just like what, what was the do. famous the, the the Marx quote? History doesn't uh, repeat itself, but it rhymes. Or and there's truth. Yeah, in that. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's, I mean, look, we're we're humans. That. We're creatures of habit, and so over time, over civilizations, like we are going to repeat behaviors just because of our innate human, you know, characteristics. Um, yep. Up to yep. a certain point, you know, we do grow and evolve, and you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so hopefully it gets better, you know, each generation, every couple hundred years, every civilization or whatever. But I agree. I mean, there's nothing wrong with at least looking back to past experiences to hopefully learn from them. Totally, totally agree. Um, so yeah, so to shift gears from that to some practical stuff. So this first point of that, it's actually funny that when you bring up on the, the reading point, this is a, actually a, it's, it's, it's not, I guess it's not 
accurately written because what that is supposed to mean actually is keep reading the article. It's like supposed to be a, 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 a teaser, okay, but yeah. I know the reason keep why reading. you're bringing that up. Yeah, yeah. I re- I, the reason you're bringing that up though is because there's a whole section on reading and we've talked about, I mean, you, we, we've bonded over our, our love for reading previously. So I get why oh, yeah. you, you immediately jumped to that, like, Oh, let's talk about that. And so, <laughs> I see so what I want to see, to, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally. Totally. Um, and, and so that's just something that, uh, you know, I, I do this little book club thing on my podcast where I, I take one book that I've liked, I do it once a month or so, give or take, and I take out five, usually five, t- sometimes three if I can't find five, but usually I can find at least five. There've been a couple books though that I really liked, they were just shorter. So I take like my five key takeaways, here are the biggest ideas that I liked or the things that, that resonated with me the most. And here are some thoughts that I have, and I'm usually kind of referencing some other books if people want to go, you know, oh, hey, this quote reminds me of this. And, and, and so I encourage people to read as much as possible because uh, it, it, pays, it pays dividends in, in a compound type of fashion, right? Similar to compound interest where, again, to put numbers to a lot of people, unless they've dabbled around in, in personal finances a bit, they don't realize this, but... I think the power of compound interest can be most easily expressed like this. So at, at 7% a year, right? So, so the, if you put money in the stock markets these days, it's a bit wild, but over, over the course of, of, mm. of centuries, it's, it's, it's returned about 8% a year, right? So it's, if you just had, if you had money, in a, if, if you were around in 1930 and you put money in and it's just, and it just sits there for, for decades at, at 7% a year compound interest, money doubles every 10 years, doubles, right? So, so you put 100, it turns into 200, then it turns into 400, then it turns into 800, right? And it grows, it grows exponentially. And that's really the power of compound interest. And, and I think that that, that uh, model applies to, to learning, right? Because the, the more you learn, the more you know, and the more you know, the more you can do, and the more you can do, the more opportunities you have to succeed. And the more and you can question. I, yeah, sure. I mean, again, I guess I would fall under opportunities, right? The, sure. okay, yeah. You start to look at the world differently, right? Yeah. And you start to see things that other people don't see. Talk about opportunities. I think one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they're looking for the loud, like three alarm fire or four alarm fire, whatever, whatever the saying is, uh, <laughs> for, for as, far as, uh, as far as an opportunity goes, as yeah. opposed to the whisper. Like most opportunities yeah. are just whispers. They're, they, they're not um, blatantly Subtle nudges obvious. That, totally. are, that you, we uh, hope that we can learn to be better able to pay attention to. Yeah, totally. And, and so how do you, how do you get there though? Right. And then, and then how do you, how do you improve your ability to make decisions? That's such a fundamental aspect of, of living that, that, was once taught in, in education, you go back to, to medieval times, right? Education started with something called the trivium, which was grammar, dialectic, and rhetoric. Grammar meaning at that time it was Latin, but it meant learning a language, right? An inflected language. Mm-hmm. And, and Latin was just the, that, that because of um, the, the church's influence at that time, you learned Latin, right? That was, right. That was yeah. what you learned. And then, and then dialectic is the, the art of investigating truth. Like, and how to learning, it's really comes down to formal logic, like how to think logically. And then rhetoric is how to speak and communicate persuasively. And you don't, those aren't really taught much in school uh, anymore. Instead, we focus on specialization. We just, we just learn subjects in school yeah. and we're kind of supposed to connect the dots. And a lot of times kids, I mean, I understand, I have a seven-year-old kid who's, who's a good kid and he does well in school, but I see that he struggles like to understand why am I learning these things, right? And sure, because yeah. it, it's hard to tell him, you know, he likes space stuff. Like, well, Lennox, yeah. if you want to, maybe you want to be an astronaut one day, you're going to have to understand math. Oh, why? Yeah. Okay, let me explain. And that's fine to a degree, but, but really it should be that the, you want to teach someone to learn. Like that's the first, they need to learn how to understand, to Huge think. Huge point. To, Okay. Learn how to learn. And then, and then you use yeah. subjects, you use subjects to just exercise those skills, right? And so that's not taught in school. It, it is taught in some schools. It's taught in some of the elite boarding schools. Uh, there's, you know, probably 20 or 30 of these schools where the upper crust sends their kids. And it actually is very much 
uh, emphasized. Mm -hmm. And and it's not taught much though to 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 just your everyday all us 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 peasants. We don't we don't really get that. Yeah, I definitely that. was not upper crust growing up, but uh, my my parents um, believed in a lot the value of higher education. So I actually from uh, I went to a, a private school, middle school and high school, and. I had Latin for years. I had rhetoric for years. I had Western nice. Civ for years. So um, it's, you know, like Lennox. And time, look what you're doing with it. Right? Yeah. I was you're, like, you're why able, am I doing this? You're able this? to communicate yeah. persuasively. Just that alone is such a meta skill. That's Invaluable such a, now. Absolutely. Totally. So, um, so I think that it, what we can do though is, I mean, I didn't, I didn't get taught. I don't, I'm trying to think back to my, to my school, maybe a little bit, but not much, but that's fine because we can learn a lot of these things ourselves yeah. through, through reading. We can, we can gather uh, all the information we need. We don't need to, to, to be taught it formally to understand it and be able to do I agree. something with it. I agree. So, so that's why I, I think that reading is crucial. I mean, um, it, it's, it's, it's one of the, the common denominators of all the most successful people that I've met and not just financially successful, that's fine, mm -hmm. but, but also successful in living. Like they actually mm -hmm. have their, their shit together. They, Quality they, they, of life. Yes. And, yeah. and they're not just good at business, but they also are good at taking care of themselves and they're good at taking care of their family and they're good friends and they're good at doing things in their community. You know what I mean? Like really higher caliber mm -hmm. people. Um, one for one are always reading, are always trying to learn new things. And, and I also think to a number of, of people who I've known throughout the years who are, are not doing so well, and especially as people I've seen who I've known for some time, and almost one for one, it's the opposite. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason, but I can sure, see yeah. that, that the, they don't, they make a lot of bad decisions and they're just ignorant. It's not even stupidity. It's not even low yeah. IQ. Some of the people are actually higher than average IQ. Oh, I believe but it. They yeah. have... They have so much bad information that uh, it, it, it's like the, they, they have good hardware, but the software sucks. Mm -hmm. And so what, what are you going to do with that, right? Yeah. You, you need so, both so, to talk to each other efficiently. A hundred percent. And, and, and you, need, you need, life is a, what is a big IQ test, right? In many ways, mm -hmm. that is true. And so that's why I, I really believe that people who don't read regularly and read the right stuff, not like vampire sex novels. <laughs> you have to read the harder stuff. You have There's to a time and a place for that. Maybe that'll be quarantine sure. day 532. You know, then you can, <laughs> well, I, you can, you can reward yourself. You know, it's, sure. hey, let's, we can, let's talk, let's, it's like, it's flexible reading, right? So ah, it's 80% of your, 80% of your reading needs to be nutritious calories. Yeah. And then you can eat junk <laughs> with the 20%. I think that's a, Hey, that's a good analogy. The I I F Y R if it fits your reading or if it fits your, yeah your intellect, you know, eh, maybe something here, who knows? <laughs> you yeah, should yeah, snag yeah. the domain now, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's the next thing. Um, and so, so that's, so that's, so that's why I yeah. do this book club. It's really just to encourage people to read and, and the episodes do fairly well on the podcast. And I hear from a lot of people, it's not for everybody, obviously, but, but I have gotten a lot of good feedback from people who have gotten encouraged to read and who have picked up one of the books I recommended and then liked it and then went yeah. to the next and the next. And so that's why in this, um, in this article, which if anybody wants to see it, it's at legionathletics.com on the blog. It's free. I'll make obviously. sure to link it all here for everybody for sure. Yeah, sure. Cool. And, and I, and I, I put some books in here and, um, that, that I, some books that I'm like, Hey, considering what we're going through right now, I think here are some good recommendations. Like, um, it's, it's trendy, but it's worth reading meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Some of the, some of the stoic huge. Yeah. There's, there's uh, a lot to be said for that, for that. I'm mindset. actually using the daily stoic right now as a laptop prop. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, obstacle is the way I liked that. I liked yeah. uh, ego is the enemy as well. I haven't read, uh, I read perennial seller. I haven't read Ryan's newest. I probably Stillness will. Stillness is the key. Yeah, I probably will. That one Amazing. appealed to me. The, uh, do you like it? it? The message, like the pitch appealed to me the least, but I'll still read it because I like, I like his writing or I like, oh, I yeah. like some of his ideas. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to give it back to you here. I don't know if you want to go into more books or what exactly you want, 
where do you want to take this? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I, uh, this is where I kind of like regret keeping these as like mini episodes because I feel like, you know, on our, actually our podcast. Uh, have I already hit my time? I talk, <laughs> I talk way too much. Dude. I try to be mindful of other people's time as well, but you know, on our, our podcast actually, you know, like a month ago was one, I think my longest one yet, but it didn't feel oh, really? like it. Um, and definitely the main point I'll kind of use to kind of maybe wrap up here is that when it comes to reading, what it does for us. I mean, look, let's be honest right now. Maybe we just need something to do. Maybe you have more yeah. time on your hands. So let's fill it wisely, use it wisely. So keep reading as a way to fill your time, add structure to your day to help stay sane. All the main concepts you were writing about in this article, but also like, I think some people need to learn how to be an education sponge, learn how to be a intellect idea sponge and others. Now is a good opportunity for us to to become sponges again, you know, people like you and me who maybe already have these practices as some kind of regularity to our day or our lives. Now we have the opportunity to go back because for me, when I can reference a book, when I can reference an idea from someone else, I've found that for a lot of people, they're more receptive to that because it's less, totally. hey, Chase is just trying to tell me what to do. Um, but no, it's kind of like third party information like, oh, okay, cool. You read this, you applied this. I can look at your life, look at your business, look at whatever and see how you're applying it. I would like to do the same. So I think it kind of removes a little bit, you know, shout out Ryan Holiday again. I think it removes a little bit of the ego from that application because it's no, yep. we're just sharing knowledge. Absolutely. Totally. And it allows you also to tap into the authority of uh, right. whoever it is that you're referencing. Right. So um, yeah, I, t I totally agree. And maybe, maybe a few final points I'll, uh, that will be helpful to people who are like, okay, uh, I, Chase, you sold me. Like I, I want to start <laughs> reading. So, so as far as routine goes and, and I talk, um, I get into some de details that we don't have to go into here in this article, but something that my personal routine for anybody who's wondering, and I, and I do get asked this fairly often mm -hmm. is I wake up, uh, usually around six and sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later, my alarms at six and it kind of depends how I'm sleeping. If I'm sleeping fine, it's usually fine. I'm waking up 530 to six. Sometimes my sleep gets a little bit wonky, but, um, so I wake up and then I, I have an infrared sauna, which you don't need to have just whatever. That's just what I have. Right. So, uh, they I go are amazing. I, I'll, I'll it, test to that. It, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Right. And so, um, I, I drink some water and then I just go and I read. And, and I sit in the sauna and I read and I do that for uh, anywhere from 45 to probably 60 minutes. The shortest would be 30 minutes if I'm a little bit crunched for time. And, but I, I do it first thing in the morning because I've found that that way I know it gets done. And it, it comes down to one of the things I talk about in this article of task prioritization and, and also time blocking. But this is for me a, a very, very high priority uh, activity reading and Huge. for the reasons that we just discussed. So, so I, I do it first thing in the morning and then afterwards uh, I do some cardio and normally I'd be going to the gym, lifting some weights and then I do cardio on the weekends. But, um, as I'm at home, I'm like, I have a little bit extra time. I'll do car. I'll do some biking every day. Right. So I do that. Actually it's an upright bike. So I continue to read. So I'm just getting an extra reading time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. and, You're, uh, and double dipping in the productivity. Man. Yeah. I mean, Hey, why not? Right? It's, yeah. it's that or watch or watch a TV show. And I really don't care about TV shows. So watch I'm a vampire sex show. <laughs> yeah. I could watch a vampire sex show. That's true. Uh, and, and, and then, and then I'll read usually a little bit in the evening. Um, when, but, but that's, that's maybe, uh, it's no more than 30 minutes. That's like, as I'm winding down, getting ready for bed. And I, again, it's that the morning though, making it the first thing that I do yeah. really helps. And, and one other thing that, um, there's an article over at legionathletics.com. Uh, you probably have to search for read books. I don't remember the okay. exact title, but it's like, here's how I read books and something that is a simple little tip that helps a lot in uh, understanding and uh, retaining what you're reading and maintaining interest and focus is making sure that you clarify words that you don't know. It sounds stupid, but a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people like we weren't taught in school to use a dictionary. We were taught to try to figure it out given the context, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, that works kind of sometimes, but a lot of times if you were to start quizzing yourself on like, okay, what do you think that word means? And now I'll go check the dictionary. A lot of times you'd be like, Oh shit. 
that's 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 mm -hmm. uh, maybe yeah. like twenty percent at best. Absolutely. Yeah, and what happens is then if you if you're going by words that you don't get, you're not you're not understanding what the person is trying to communicate to you. If if they were a halfway decent writer, they chose their words carefully, and and writers tend to be more into dictionaries, and they tend to be more into um, uh, preciseness, right? And so if, if you're not, you're, we're trying to get that mind meld, right? That's the whole point of it. And if, if we're going by too many words and going, yeah, whatever, or I think it means that or whatever, we're not achieving that. We're actually walking right. away with some other, some other bit, uh, version of, we're getting of our ideas. own interpretation of yep. it, <clears throat> excuse me, which can be very helpful and necessary, but also it was written in certain words to deliver a certain message. And if you're walking away, and the from English language is incredibly subtle too. I mean, there exactly. are so many words in the language and so many differences in, in, in nuance where synonyms are not exactly the same. Some are, but, but many are not Many actually do have. And if uh, differences that, that change the meaning of what you're reading, right? So, right. um, that's it. doing it is, is a little bit annoying actually, because it means you read slower, but I'm, <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm okay yeah. with that though, because I'm going for, for quality over quantity. I still get a decent quantity done because I put in time every day, but I, I could double, I could double or triple the quantity if I stopped doing that, but it would drastically reduce the quality of right. the learning. And so that's a, that's a tip that, that I share. And maybe if you want, if we still have a minute, I'll just share a few more books, recommendations for people. Who, oh yeah, I'm sure again, everybody's like, looking for a new read right now. Okay, so uh, so so meditations by Aurelius, and if you want to jump in with anything as well, um, but I, I think that that is, will give some great perspective. Um, also, some of Seneca's work as well. Oh yeah, anything Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, uh, Epictetus. I mean, really. Yep. I mean, I, I I start my days off every day for now for years reading passages from you know Stoic philosophers and people like Viktor Frankl. You know, shout out Holiday again, the Daily Stoic. Um, yeah, ditto to everybody here. Yep. Yep. Um, Principles by Ray Dalio. And mm. it's a dry book and it's, it's formatted like an outline. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, like all yeah. bullet pointed and, you know, yeah. indented and stuff. A lot of really good information there in the, in that book though. He's yeah. a very smart guy. And um, there, there are quite a few ideas that really resonated with me and, you know, where you find these gems and you're like, Oh, that's really good actually. You know what I mean? And um, so there was a, there was a lot of that in there. You, it, it is, it is, it reads like a textbook. So don't, he's not trying to entertain you. He's just trying to share with you. Like here are the biggest lessons I've learned becoming one of the most successful people in the world, basically. And, and he doesn't hold anything back. Um, the war of art by Stephen Pressfield mm -hmm. learning about the concept of resistance, which a lot of us are dealing with right now. I even understand, I feel a little bit more distracted than usual. Uh, a little bit, it's a little bit more difficult to concentrate just because of what's going on. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. just, it's just natural. And um, so, so I think that the information that Stephen Pressfield shares in that book can help uh, put it, put it, give it, give it, give it a, give it some framework to understand uh, what, what it is that we're running up against and inspire us to push through it really that the book is, is meant to, it's not a how to book, Really, it's kind of like an inspirational. You can do sure, this kind of book, yeah. but I think it's done in a, in a good, in a creative and and um, insightful way, more so maybe than than some of the the kind of pop self help stuff that's out. Yeah, there. I was going to say that one. I think uh, a lot of creatives would find value in uh, a lot of my. I think I, think I, I say everybody though too. I mean, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I'd say everybody though. Anybody who's like trying to do something <laughs> can <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Excuse uh, me. So, so that also the magic of thinking big by David Schwartz, uh, mm -hmm. a, a little bit woo woo, but it's great. It's good. It has a lot of good ideas. Pull out of it what you need to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and we already, we already mentioned the obstacles, the way by Ryan mm -hmm. holiday. Again, I'd say that as well as message to Garcia by Elbert Hubbard. And that's just like an essay. You can find it. Yeah. Online. I don't know that one. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I linked to it, uh, but that's, that's, it's 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 a short little anecdote. It's really just an essay, but uh, I I really, I really like the message of it, and it's it's kind of like a take no prisoners, no holes mm. barred. Like this mm -hmm. is this is the dirty truth, basically, kind of yeah. kind of approach. Very um, cool. 
So yeah, those are, those are, those are some recommendations. Yeah. And I, I'd say one more, the one thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. Oh, huge. That as well. Yeah. Right now, if maybe you're bringing or trying to bring more uh, attention and awareness into your life of productivity, um, yep. strategic goal setting, the one thing has been instrumental uh, in my personal life and my business. It's one actually I reread every new year, like every January I revisit it. Um, also they have a great podcast, uh, great content in general. Um, the audio book I recommend as well, because you can just go to it when you need, maybe when you feel kind of distractions or frictions in, in personal life and in business, you can kind of go to the audio book and get those main takeaways of sections pretty quickly. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. I'll make sure to share all that and link all that for everybody as well. Um, and if you want to learn more about Mike, all of this content will be linked here as well. Uh, him and I had a great conversation on my show, episode 292. Um, we walked through actually the whole duration of your morning routine, which I got a lot of great feedback on. People are looking for routines um, before COVID, but definitely now, you know, how do we instill routine? How do we modify our past routine to keep sane, to keep structure and, you know, to keep, keep moving forward. That's what we're hopefully trying to do here in the summit. So totally. And, and I just to, to, I think, so one more thing just to share is I think that this is an opportunity for us to, we can emerge from this as individuals and maybe collectively as a society as, as stronger, we can, we can come out of this in a better place. Many of us, I understand some people maybe are dealing with issues that are a bit outside of the boundaries of what we're talking about here, but I would think many people listening do have the opportunity here to come out of this better Overall, uh, I mean, absolutely, we're gonna we're gonna come out of it economic, like financially, we're probably gonna come out a bit worse. Okay, let's just <laughs> that is what it is, right? Let's accept um, it. Yeah, exactly, and that that's that's for for everyone, unless you, unless you sell hand sanitizer or home workout equipment <laughs> or <laughs> or face masks or something. Although the government's probably confiscating them now, right? Most of us, probably. All right, we're gonna be a little bit behind there, but as 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 individuals. Um, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, we can, I think, come out of this in a, in a better place than we went into it. We just uh, need to, to have, it, have a schedule there and do the right actions every day. And, um, and, and you, know, you, you, you take the right actions, you get the right results. It's, it's a pretty simple system if, if you put the right pieces yeah. together, you know? Absolutely. Mike, it's been a pleasure having you on here, man. Uh, thank you for your insight. Um, an educated guy, a, a learned guy, <clears throat> excuse me. And that didn't just good at, good at playing one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and that didn't just happen. I'm with you, man. Uh, the power of reading, keep reading, keep reading. Um, so that you can go back to being a sponge again, learn how to be a sponge for the first time so that you can just understand bigger picture things and just honestly get out of your own thinking modalities, because then you're no longer thinking just about me, just about you. You know, it's opening up your eyes to what was, what is, and what could be in a lot of different ways, man. So totally agree. that's a wrap, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us at the summit here, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate the invite.